how's it going? I'm Ida Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay. Um, so some of you kind of realise my last vlog was a little bit um, unusual because I sort of broken up the vlog that I had been doing into two parts because it got a little bit on the long side. The second half of it was completely irrelevant to the first half of it in so many ways. So I just felt it was best to sort of break it up. Um, but as such, I didn't actually decide what the topic for this one was going to be. Um, so I decided this is probably not going to be a particularly long one. I am sort of filming it around all the other things I've got going on over the Christmas period. Um, hence the hat, my hair is not in the state that it would normally be in. I, I usually wash it before I do one of these vlogs so it's all nice and fluffy. Um, unfortunately, because of everything I've got going on at the moment, I'm not able to, to do this vlog on one of the days when I would normally wash my hair. <laughs> and I don't want to overwash my hair. Um, so hence the, the hat, just so you know, my hair doesn't look awful and greasy, which is what it quite often looks like um, by this point uh, on, on one of the days when I don't wash my hair. Um, so <laughs> what have I decided uh, to do for this vlog? Um, it's the first vlog of a new year, so I thought it would be good to talk about my new year resolutions. Um, new year resolutions. <laughs> Did I say that right? <laughs> Um, so that's, that's what I'm going to do. Um, I've sort of alluded to what some of those might possibly be, um, over the last few vlogs that I have done. Um, but I thought I'd just sort of like clarify and, you know, talk to you guys about what I'm hoping for this upcoming year, um, and how things I'm hoping, how I'm hoping things are going to go during this upcoming year, um, and, you know, various bits and pieces like that. Um, so last year, my new resolutions were to become a homeowner and to publish another book, a book of which I managed to achieve before the end of the year. So, you know, I've, I've got now a good track record <laughs> of one whole year. I usually don't make New Year's resolutions, so the fact that I've managed to keep both of the ones that I did make, um, and likewise the year that my New Year's resolution was to lose weight, I, I managed that as well, hence not being uh, <laughs> not being 14 stone anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah, so my New Year's resolution, or resolution probably, um, for this year, it's, it's all very book focused again. Um, my, well, the first one is to get the next book published uh, before the end of the year. Uh, so that's the next book in the Never Aiton collection. This will be the third book in the Never Aiton collection, so there are already two out. Um, my second New Year's resolution is to move Echo from uh, Lulu onto Kindle Direct, um, which should happen fairly soon anyway. I'm not sure I should really count it as a New Year's resolution or a what I'm planning to do in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> um, and along with that, I'm also planning um, to get uh, paperback versions of all those books set up on Kindle Direct as well. The easiest one for doing that will be Echo because Echo's um, paperback cover is really just the front cover and the back uh, image. It doesn't have like the, the middle bit, the middle bit which is like uh, Okay, I'll just use what what Kindles, um, not Kindle, what Lulu <laughs> has available for sorting that middle bit. Whereas with Hyena Boy, um, that whole wraparound cover was designed um, by my friend, so he needs to adjust the sizing before I can make the the paperback available for for Hyena Boy. Um, because I, I, you know, the, the sizing for, for Kindle Direct is different to the sizing for, for Lulu. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. So my, my New Year's resolution for January <laughs> is to transfer it over Echo and to sort the paperback versions for all three of the books. I mean, the likelihood is I won't get all of those covers 
sorted before the end of January, but to at least be in the process and to be in the position by the end of January for those paperbacks to sort of start happening soon and certainly by the end of January to have Echo transferred over to um, Kindle Direct. Um, you know, I don't know if I should say their aims or their, you know, um, these resolutions, but definitely because um, it's all connected to to the big New Year's resolution, which is to work harder on getting my name out there and achieving my goal of being a writer, being a full time author. Um, it's not something I thought over the last few years I would be in this good a position for anytime soon because. As I've mentioned before, one of the major, major things that I struggle with is promotion. I'm promoting myself and getting my name out there and getting people reading because uh, it's it's so hard. <laughs> it's so hard when you have very limited funds and you are doing the indie author route. Um, because thing, you know, a lot of the things that you want to do cost money that you don't have. And obviously the last you know, last few years, I've been saving up to become a homeowner because being a homeowner is a greater financial security for, for someone like me who is on their own, um, whose health is a little bit uh, more unpredictable. I mean, touch wood, I've never had to take any major time off because of my health. I've always managed to sort of keep it, keep it floating, keep it going, keep it, you know, uh, keep myself you know, motivated to go into work and, and, and you know get stuff done and get paid um, but you know having like a, a roof over my head that I own and that I'm investing in my future and that you know eventually someday you know it's it's going to pay off and you know that that's something that's been a lot more important to me the last couple of years than necessarily you know getting myself noticed getting getting, getting my books noticed um which means I haven't had the funds there to get my books noticed. And you really do have to be prepared a little bit to spend money in order to make money uh, if you are a complete unknown. Um, and not having like any funds there at all, that's made it really difficult. Uh, not having the right uh, knowledge and tools at my disposal also hasn't helped. Um, I mean, one thing that I've found with Kindle Direct Publishing and this, this is something that, you know, it makes it feel like moving my, my books over to it is the right move and releasing all my future books via it is definitely the right move, is the tools that they've got available for you as a writer work. And that's not something I've had before. I, you know, I've, I've taken, you know, some chances, I, you know, I have spent a little bit of money and it's never borne any results before, but there is something about the, the formula um, and something about the way Kindle Direct works that, you know, for the first time I'm getting people reading my books. And if people are reading my books, then they're talking about my books. And if they're talking about my books, then more people are going to be reading my books. Um, I still don't have any reviews yet. And, you know, there's, there's a part of me that is like, Oh my god, I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm so nervous for my first review. Um, as a very paranoid person, I'm like, oh, it's just they're, they're gonna give me one star, they're gonna say it's terrible, they're gonna say they hated it and to avoid the book. And yeah, I'm 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 really, really concerned. But then I sort of think to myself, anybody that's made it all the way to the end of the book just to say they hate the book. <laughs> That's a lot of giving it chance in order to make that kind of decision. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm nervous about, you know, getting my first review. Um, but I know that once I do have my first review or my first few reviews, again, that, that makes life easier because it makes you more visible. It means that more people are talking about your books and it's, it's all this kind of self-perpetuating, self-perpetuating cycle. Um, but you need, you know, people to be reading your books in order for them to know about your books, in order for them to review your books, in order for people to want to read your books. Um, but trying to get that cycle started, trying to get, you know, th those first couple of readers is so hard when you are trying to go it alone and have limited funds 
and you have no idea what the best method of doing anything is. Um, so you're taking risks and you're taking chances and you're doing various things that are not giving you any results. And it can be so disheartening. It can be so disheartening. Um, but, you know, there, for some reason, Kindle Direct is working for me right now. And it just feels like, OK, yeah, I need to be on this platform. I need to be getting my work out there on this platform because it's working. It is getting people reading my books. OK, it's not, you know, it's not hundreds of people right now, but it's still more people reading my books than I, than I have had since, you know, in, in like in total since I released Blood, Friendship and Marriage, Time Forgets, nine, ten years ago. That's how long it's been. Just in the last month, I've had more copies of two of my books, like combined, not, not individually, two of my books combined. Have, there, there have been more copies of them out there being read by people than I've had across all my books that I released via Lulu or that other site that we won't talk about um, for the last nine, ten years. And that just feels like a breakthrough to, to someone like me, to someone who knows that the issue this whole time has been getting my books in front of people I'm not, I'm not, I'm not by any means saying that I'm some, you know, fantastic, everybody must read me kind of author, I'm not that arrogant. I know full well that not everyone's going to get on with my writing style, not everybody is going to write t like the types of stories that I write. You know, there are people out there who are more action orientated and I'm more character driven, you know, so I know I'm not a perfect writer, I know I'm not somebody that's going to necessarily be universally loved by everybody that, that reads me, but to have people out there actually reading me is so important. It's so important because that's that first step. It's that first little step towards getting people reading and getting people going, okay, this is my audience. I found my audience. These are the people who enjoy my work. These are the people who enjoy my book. These are the people who are going to help me build my audience. And it's, just having that first step where just there, just literally there for me. And I've not had that first step in so long. And it just feels all of a sudden like things are starting to click and things are starting to, to, to get into place. And, you know, it, it's exciting. It, it's very, very exciting for me. And, you know, part of the reason why my New Year's resolution this year is to A, get the next book published, be, get Echo over onto the, onto Kindle Direct and, you know, see, make a consecutive effort, make a, you know, definite consecutive effort to get people reading is because once people are reading, once the work is out there being read and being talked about, you're building an audience and you're going to get more reads and you're going to get those reviews and, you know, not everybody's going to like it, but not everybody's going to hate it. <laughs> um, and one of the one of the things, and I don't know if I mentioned this in the last video or not, but one of the things with um, with Kindle Direct because I'm, I've put my enrolled my book in the, the Kindle Select, so it's available via Kindle Unlimited. Uh, both of them, both hiding away in the colours I see, self-promotion, self-promotion, self-promotion. <laughs> um, but one of the things that it, you know, with the, the, the Kindle Limited and the Kindle Library Lending, I think it's called, um, is that you, you do get paid per page read. It's not a huge amount per page read, but obviously the longer your book is, the, the more money you get per, you know, um, per book, <laughs> you know, it, it's all page dependent as to how, how uh, viable it is as an option um, for, for your, you know, what, which, what's going to work out more fi financially viable. So the colours I see, I'm definitely going to earn more money from page reads um, if people read the whole book than I will for Hyena Boy, because Hyena Boy is a much shorter book. 
um, but you know that that for me became or there. What's so exciting is because there aren't very many people reading at the moment. Um, I can almost track individual readers um, by their reading habits, <laughs> just just based on like when my page reads are appearing, um, and actually country location for one of them as well. Um, so for me, that's that's kind of exciting because the I mean, as, as I said, I, it's not it's not perfect. I can't necessarily one hundred percent say for definite yes it's just one person reading or actually no it's two or three people and, and they've given up after so many pages but based on like um how many pages are read and like the frequency of them being read and and various things like that it looks more like one person doing a, a sit um doing you know a, a sit in read for a little while then it does uh, look like you know various people like just trying the book, um, if that makes sense. So, you know, I I feel like I can track the two or three people that are currently reading. <laughs> um, which, it sounds terrible, and I apologise to you lovely, lovely people out there. If you ever see this and you realise I'm talking about you, thank you so much for reading to, to begin with, and I, I apologise. <laughs> that I am obsessively tracking how much you're reading right now. But for me, nothing makes me more excited than knowing people are reading my work and the fact that occasionally these people are are sitting and reading a huge chunk at, in one in one or two sittings on the same day is just the best feeling in the world because it means you're enjoying it and I, as a writer, love nothing more than knowing that people are enjoying my work, um, which sounds, you know, oh, of course every writer thinks that, but I mean, I some of my early videos on this channel, um, I mentioned that I was originally a fanfic writer, um, and that some of my fanfics are still uh, available to read on uh, fanfiction.net, my, my tale saga, which is Got a name drop that tail saga every now and then because it's fun. <laughs> um, the thing that I learned about myself from the forums that I used to post on, I used to get my fanfics out there with, is that the one thing I I love more than anything is the enjoyment of my readers. Um, I mean, I, I made quite good friends with, with a lot of my, my fanfic readers um, back in the day, back when I was on um, yugiofans.co.uk and, you know, talking about, talking to them about, you know, where they, what chapter they'd got up to, what their theories were, you know, uh, what they thought was going on, where they thought the story was going next, which characters they liked, you know, um, and very, you know, what they were excited for and various bits like that. It made me so happy um, because they were enjoying it, and I was creating that enjoyment for them. And it's something that I miss so much. So I, I do apologise to anyone out there if you know it feels like I'm spying on you. <laughs> and obviously, you you know you don't necessarily you can't see what I'm doing on my end. Um, I know that. But, you know, from me saying, I'm pretty sure I'm tracking like two or three readers right now. And if you, you readers ever do watch this, <laughs> it feels like I'm spying on you, please. Please don't take it that way. It's just me feeling excited that you, you are reading and you must be enjoying it because you're still reading. Um, and that just means, means so much. <laughs> it, it genuinely does. And... Yeah, and, and to everybody that has a copy of Hyena Boy or a copy of um, The Colours I See that, you know, of, of the copies that have been purchased or ordered this month, um, free promotion, it's, it's ordered, uh, right, well, I suppose they're purchased through a free promotion, but, you know, every, everybody that has taken that chance this month, I mean, thank you guys so much. Um, you know, it's not easy to take a chance on an author you've never heard of, for a book you've never heard of, that don't have any reviews yet. God, I still don't have any reviews. <laughs> it's not 
easy to take a chance on something that you don't know whether or not it's going to be good. And it's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm glad the the samples that um, that Amazon give people to read are so long, um, and that people can sort of read quite a good chunk of it because it gives them that opportunity to go, you know what, this is actually something that I really want to keep reading. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, keep reading it from this point. And, you know, it, it's, you know, it then means it's less of a chance for, for that person because they're relying on, you know, me and, and my work itself to make that decision for them rather than necessarily customer reviews. But at the same time, customer reviews are important. <laughs> Because good customer reviews make you a lot more visible. And, and I'm, you know, if you guys hear me talking about things like visibility and stuff like that, when I'm talking about the, the author and the writer's writerly stuff um, over the next year, just know that without visibility and, and without people seeing your book for one way, one way or another, you don't get the reads, you don't get the attention, you don't get this, you don't get that. It's, it makes life so much harder. Um, you know, visibility and, and findability and things like that, it's so, so difficult. So when you're in a position where, you know, it feels like you've made a little bit of a breakthrough, it feels like you've made a little bit of a, a little bit of progress, it feels like such a huge thing. And, you know, I'm, I'm talking, you know, I just over, just, just over one book a day for the last month. When you actually average out what it what it must be, not not even quite two books a day uh, for the last month. It, it's like one in a fraction, but that's still more books in one month out there with people reading them, potentially reading them, um, than I have had in ten years, and that is so important to an indie author who has been struggling to break through because they haven't been able to figure out the right formula. Um, that it's just, it makes me wonder why I didn't make this move sooner. It really, really does. Um, I know I got a little bit sidetracked from what I thought was just going to be me talking briefly about my New Year's resolutions. Um, but it's just, you know, since, and then, I know, it's just, it feels like I'm, I'm stuck on a bit of a loop for the last few weeks. Um, especially with the, with the last one, the last one was sort of filmed before the crossover, uh, for Hyena Boy. And this has been since the crossover of, of Hyena Boy and, and the fact that it's still been so successful and it's still working out really well for me and it's still such good it's such a good position to be in it's such good progress that i have made that it's just it feels like i'm finally on the right track and that this time next year i can be sat here sort of saying yeah i've just had a successful book launch um still not making huge you know lots and lots of money with it but that doesn't matter people are reading and you know if it was if it was all about making money for me, then I wouldn't be like, let's give out a load of free copies. <laughs> let's, let's give out a load of free copies so people can read. I mean, obviously, it's nice if I can make money from it. It's nice if I can reach the point where I can live off my writing, you know, full time. But I don't I don't expect to be a better seller. It'd be, it'd be a miracle. I mean, I would be ecstatically happy if I were a bestseller. <laughs> but I don't expect to ever be a bestseller. I don't expect to ever be, you know, you know, that big. I expect that I will be someone capable of making a tidy bit of profit off of a lot of books. Which is a good thing because I've got a huge back catalog of books I need to get out there. Oh god, so many books. People are going to hate me. <laughs> um, but but that's, that's the thing. That's the type of writer that I've always seen myself being. Not someone who's ever going to be huge for a select small number of books, but somebody who can make a decent living from a lot of books and, and from producing regularly, which 
is something that I also haven't really done over the last few years. <laughs> like the last three years, one book a year, that's as regular as I have been. I'm hoping as things progress, if things keep progressing in the right direction, I might be able to start upping and upping and upping how many books I produce on a regular basis um, with the hopes that, you know, as I said, eventually I will be able to live off of my writing. Um, not that I don't love the day job, I do still love the day job. I love the day job a lot. <laughs> I always kind of, kind of hoping that I do have that little bit of time. Um, and, and, you know, realistically, I do have that little bit of time because I'm never going to be a best-selling author. I'm, you know, as I said, I'm just going to be somebody who makes a little bit, you know, from, from you know, a lot of books um, that kind of all, you know, terminates together in order to, to... yeah, <laughs> there are words there. Um, but it's, it's, you know, I have realistic expectations about how this year is going to go in regards to my, to my writing and, and to my work. And it does mean that I have to be more consistent and more dedicated to all the social media things that I'm trying to do and trying to, you know, ways of trying to get myself noticed and get my work out there and, and stuff like that. It's not easy for someone as introverted as I am to kind of give themselves that push, but the fact that I've had some decent momentum recently and, and some, a little bit of headway means that for the first time, and this is the first book launch that I've had, that I feel, oh, hang on a second, it's not me. <laughs> that, that's a good feeling, but it, it's not me, it's not my writing, it's you know, it's the difficulty in, in getting publicised, in getting you know, the promotions at work, in getting noticed. And, you know, that's a good feeling. That's a very good feeling. <laughs> um, I mean, as I said, I, I know I'm not a perfect writer. Um, I know I'm not, you know, a bestseller candidate. But I, I am a talented writer. I am a good writer. I, you know, I tell good stories, good, interesting stories with good, interesting characters. Um, as I said to you guys before, I'm a huge fangirl of my own work. <laughs> Part of the reason I like talking to people about my own writing is so that I can flap like a little fangirl. <laughs> and that's the thing. I always take, you know... If I don't enjoy what I'm writing, if I don't enjoy what, you know, I'm reading back and what I'm editing, then what's the point? Uh, you know, if, if I don't like it, how am I expecting, expecting anyone else to like it? Um, but it can be so disheartening when, you know, you release a book and you don't get any sales. It can be so disheartening. So just this little bit of momentum, just this little bit of movement, just this little bit of people are actually reading me. It doesn't matter how much money I've made not not doesn't matter you know all those free books that's people out there taking a chance and that is so so important that is so tremendously important that is such a huge first step for an indie author is to have people taking a chance on your work and the fact that people are finally taking that chance doesn't matter how few there are, those few can double. Those few, if they talk to the right people at the right time, if they review the book, if they this, that or the other, you know, it doesn't take much. Those few people taking a chance is a huge first step forward. If only I could work out how to keep that momentum going. <laughs> I really, really wish I could work out how to keep that momentum going. It's so hard. It's so, so hard. Um, because it, you know, it, you know, how, how, how can you, how can you sort of figure these things out? How can you, you know, uh, get perfect the formula when you're still not entirely sure how it's worked so well so far? Um, but I know which chances I'm taking. I know keeping the books visible is in, important, even if, you know, 
you, you'll, you're sort of being sneaky um, in, in how you're doing it. So as long as the books are staying visible, as long as people are still you know, able to, to, to see the books, hopefully then when the first reviews start coming in, that will increase the visibility and things can snowball. But there's no guarantee that any of those people that are currently reading the book are going to leave a review. And that's, again, that's a chance that I, that I have to take. That's, you know, that's, that's the risk, but if nobody's reading, then nobody's reviewing. So it's the same position, you know? Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just like that. <laughs> it's just like that. And I know I'm so, so far off topic and I apologize, but I am slightly obsessed with this particular topic right now, but I think I kind of need to be, um, so I apologise for my next few vlogs are very focused or get very distracted by um, all of this. I'm not intending for for it to be like that, but sometimes, you know, it, you've, you've got to keep your mind focused where it's focused, and this is where my mind is currently focused. Um, Having said that, I have no idea what the next topic for the next vlog is going to be. I don't have a calendar for next year yet. I still haven't picked up a calendar for next year yet. Um, so I haven't had a chance to write down what the next topic is yet. I haven't thought about what the next topic is yet. I just know I need to get this one recorded. Um, and maybe edited, probably edited tomorrow morning. Um, Probably uploaded now. I've, I've got the Friday off. I've, I've got the Friday this one goes up off, so if I need to, I can always edit and upload it um, on the same day. Um, but you know, it, I, I knew I needed to get this one done because it's my only opportunity is today in order to get it done. My previous opportunity was ruined by my tumble dryer going on for far too long <laughs> and losing all the decent lights. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, I don't know what the next vlog is going to be about. That's going to be a surprise to you guys when we come back next time, I guess. Um, and I'm not filming a second one today. This one's this one's gone on too long. It's going to take such a long time to upload to the cloud. <laughs> I'm a terrible person. <laughs> All right, okay. I hope you guys have found this one sort of interesting. Um, I know it's mostly been me rambling excitedly and kind of saying the same thing over and over again <laughs> for which I apologize I'm so sorry it can't be very interesting for you uh, it's, it's really interesting for me but <laughs> I hope you're looking forward to finding out what the topic of the next vlog is going to be and I will see you next time see ya <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video feel free to check out some of my others and if you like what you see please like and subscribe See ya!